Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. This is another installment of we're going to figure Notion out together because the struggle is real. I've already shown you how to take free templates and create a Notion dashboard that works for you. Now let's learn how to build a Notion template so that you can customize your templates and create a system that is perfect for you. Today we are going to be creating a simple dashboard that will help you organize your tasks and projects. Let's get into it. Once you've opened Notion, the first thing you want to do is add a new page. I'm going to title this page dashboard, but you can use whatever title on the page that you want. Using the three dots at the top right, I'm going to toggle on full width so we will have the full page in Notion to work on. I'm also going to hide the navigation bar using the arrows at the top right of the bar. Now let's add a cover to the dashboard. You can create a cover in Canva and import it here if you would like, and you can also use the unsplash search function to customize your cover. I'm going to search for desk and select a cover. Once you have selected your cover, you can reposition it to show what part of the picture that you want. I'm also going to add a heart shape icon to the template. Let's go back to the three dots and toggle on small text. I just like the sizing better. For this dashboard, we are going to build a few databases that we'll be using on the dashboard. To create a database, Type the backslash and then enter data. From the drop down, select database full page. First database will be for task. I'm going to add the title task and then add an icon. Delete the tag property because we don't need that. Now we're going to add a few other properties to the dashboard. Select the plus sign to see your options for properties that you can add to a database. I'm going to select date from the drop down to add a due date property. I'm going to use this top box to change the name of this property to due date. I'm going to add another property and choose select from the drop down list. I'm going to change the name of this property to priority. And under the options, I'm going to add high, medium, and low to choose from. You can also select the options and change the color of the background. Select the drop down to the right of new on the database. Here we are going to add a new template. For the template, we're going to title it new task and select an icon. I'm going to use the same icon that I used for the task database. Once you've selected your icon, use the back at the top left to get back to the main screen. Go back to the drop down to the right of new and select the three dots to the right of new task. Set this as your default. In the pop-up, select for all views and tasks, then select the space to the left of name on the database to select all the rows that are currently there and delete them. Going back to the dashboard, we're going to create another full page database for areas. Choose an icon and delete the tag property. Now we're going to add a list of areas to use for your task and projects. The list that I'm adding are just suggestions and can be used, but feel free to add whatever areas you want to group your task or projects in. I'm also going to give each area that I add an icon. The last database I'm going to create is for projects. I'm going to add the title and icon to the database. Delete the tag property from the database. And now we're going to add a template for new projects. Once I've added the title to the template, I'm going to use the folder icon on this template as well. Delete the current rows on the table and then go back to new and set the template that we just created as default for the project view. I'm going to add a new project for planting flowers. 
and now create a couple of properties for relations. This is how you connect databases. Use the plus sign to add a new property and select relation from the drop down. In the relation drop down area, you're going to select areas. Toggle on show in areas so the relation will show on both tables and add the relation. Now I'm going to add the areas icon. We're going to create another relation property for the task. Make sure that you toggle on show on task and add the relation. Now add the task icon. I don't have any tasks to link, so I'm going to go back to the task database and add a task. Once I select the area to create a row, the new task template will be added automatically. For this task, I'm going to set a due date, I'm going to set the priority, and from here I can link the task to the project that it's assigned to. I'm also going to add the project icon to the property. Now let's add a new relation property for area to this task database. I'm going to show the relation on the area database and select add. I'm also going to add an icon for the area property and assign this task to the right area. Now I'm just going to adjust the columns on this database real quick and add one last property. This one's going to be a checkbox. I'm going to name the checkbox completed and resize the column so you only see the checkbox. I'm going to go through each one of the databases and check for any icons that haven't been changed on the properties and I'm going to change them now. Now it's time to put the dashboard together. The first thing I'm going to do is create a box for the databases by typing backslash and call out. I'm going to give it the title databases and change the icon. I'm also going to remove the background color and change it to default so there's no color just outline. Highlighting all the databases, I'm going to drag and drop them into the callout box. Now I'm going to create two columns by typing backslash and two and selecting two columns from the drop down. I'm going to drag the database callout to the right column and I'm going to add another callout to the left. This is going to be the today's inbox area for tasks that are due today and I'm going to add an envelope for the icon. A view of the task database will be added here and there are a few ways that you can create a view. The first way is to go to the database and use the three dots and in the drop down select copy link to view. Going back to the dashboard, I'm going to paste the link and in the pop-up select create link view of the database. Now drag the database into the inbox. I'm going to hide the database title and change the layout to list. Using the three dots, go to properties, and now we're going to unhide the view for some of the listed views. Here you can use the show all option, or you can select the eye next to each property to unhide them individually. You can also use the block to the left of the property to drag them to rearrange the listing order. Now let's add a filter for today's task. Select the filter icon at the top of the database and in the drop down select add advanced filter. In the drop down after where select due date and in the last drop down change the week today. Now it will only show the task that you have due today. Select add filter for completed and then select unchecked. So now only the current active task will show. You may be wondering why I use the advanced filter feature here. When you use the regular filter option and leave the page, when you come back, the filter will unhide. To prevent that, use the advanced filter option on all of your filters. So I'm going to select the drop down next to completed filter and the three dots and then add to advanced filter. I'm going to add another view of the task database. This is the second way you can add a view. Use the three dots next to the database and select copy link from the drop down menu. Select create link view when you paste it. Change the layout to calendar and then go down to show calendar option and change that to week. I'm also going to change open page in to side peek. Now this view needs a filter. Select advanced filter and then due date. And once you select due date, everything else is set to where it needs to be to show this week. Now we're gonna add a filter rule and select completed and then select unchecked.
hide the database title, and then rename this view to weekly. Duplicate the weekly view and rename it monthly. Go to the layout and change the show calendar as to monthly and now you have a view of your weekly task and a view of your monthly task. Drag the database to the column under the inbox. Now I'm just going to drag an empty line to add a space between a calendar and the inbox. Create another callout box to the right under the database column and drag that callout above the database. I'm going to add a space in between the two boxes and the top call out I'm going to use it for a quick view of tomorrow's task and also this week's task. So we're going to change the icon to the task icon that we used on that database. I'm going to title this task and in the empty space that I created I'm going to use backslash and search for toggle list. I'm going to name this toggle list tomorrow, drop down the toggle and I'm going to add a view of the task database. Hide the database title and change the view to list. Select properties and add the due date to property. Add on an advanced filter. Select the drop down for rule one and change the name to due date. Change this to next and week to day. Select add a filter rule and select completed and unchecked. Now you have a view of all your tasks scheduled for the next day. I'm going back into properties and I'm going to remove property and due date from the view and I'm going to add in completed. Now drag the task database into the task callout. Select the gray box on the side of task list and select duplicate. Expand both toggle lists. Change the name on the second toggle list to this week. Open the filter and change the next to this and day to week. I'm going back to the inbox and name the database here task. Select the space under the inbox and we're going to add a divider by typing backslash and divide. Once you start typing out divide, dividers will show up and you can select it from the drop down. The third way I'm going to show you how to add a database is to backslash and type in linked and you'll see the option to link a database. From here you can choose the database that you want to link in this area. We're going to choose projects and add a project database view here. I'm going to change the layout to the project database to a board view. I'm going to set card preview to none, the card size to small, and leave it set to the side peak view. Select group by and make sure that it's set to areas. Now I'm going back to the project dashboard and I'm going to add a checkbox property. Title this property as completed and resize the column so only the checkbox shows. Now I'm going back to the dashboard. Add a filter for completed and unchecked. Hide the dashboard title and change the name of the view to projects. Now I'm going to test out the dashboard and make sure everything works. Under project, use the plus sign and I'm going to add in a project for finance. The project will be to create a budget. Under task, I'm going to add Notion budget template and set the priority to medium. I'm going to link it to the budget project. Add in the area and then assign the task a due date. You should now see the task on your calendar and in weekly or tomorrow tasks depending on the date that you use. That's it for the task dashboard. Now let's add a few widgets. First widget I'm going to use is from Indify Widgets. I'm going to show you the process of setting up and adding a couple of widgets to your dashboard, but you can choose whatever widgets you want to use on your dashboard. Make sure to set up an account on the widget websites. You can create some of the widgets they offer for free. 
I'm going to add a clock widget and use the analog smooth clock. Now you can customize the color in the background for your clock. I'm going to set the dark and light appearance to use the system settings and copy the link at the bottom. Going back to the dashboard, I'm going to drag an empty line to the top and use this space to add my widgets. Paste the link and select Create Embed from the pop-up. Now I'm going to add a quote widget from Widget Box. I'm customizing the background color, the box size, and the size of the font on this widget. Copy the link and head back to the dashboard. Paste the link in an empty space and create an embed. Resize and drag the widget to the area that you want to place it. Now I'm headed back to Endify to grab my last widget. The last widget that I want to add is the progress widget. Now if you don't add a date in this slot, it'll automatically track the progress for the year and that's what I want. After customizing the widget, copy the link and head back to the dashboard. Paste and create an embed for your widget and then drag it to the place that you want to use it. The last thing I'm going to do is adjust the size and the spacing for the widgets and the dashboard's done. I hope this tutorial has been helpful and will assist you in organizing and completing your task. Alright y'all, till next time.